This is the chapter review on page 250. So the first one, number 21, we have this graph here. It says, what is the maximum value of f of x? So this is your maximum point here. See, so the f of x is like your y. So the maximum y is a 4. What is the value of x at that maximum? So the, value, the x is a 1. How many solutions does it have? It would have two real, one around this area and one around this area. How many solutions are where it's equal to six? Okay, so it does. Here's at y equals six. It doesn't equal six. The maximum is a four, so it doesn't go up to six. So there are our answers for number twenty-one. Number twenty-nine asks us use to use the intermediate value theorem to show that there's a poly a zero between these two x's. So we want to plug them in. Okay, so we take negative two and plug them in here. I get twelve. Plug a negative one in here. I get negative four. So we know that negative 2 would be up here at 12, and at negative 1 would be down here at negative 4. I know there has to be a 0 in between there. So since opposite signs, there's a 0 in between. OK, so that's number 29. Number 30 is asking us to use synthetic division. So I'm dividing by x minus 3, so I'm going to have a positive 3 out front here. And remember we bring this one down, multiply and add, multiply and add, multiply and add. So my answer is 1x squared plus 4x plus 1 minus the remainder of x minus 3. Okay, for part b, so it would be negative 2 here. 3x to the third, 8x squared, is 5x's, and 10. Negative 6, add. Negative 4, add. Negative 2, add. So it's 3x squared plus 2x plus 1 plus a remainder of 8 over our x plus 2. 31 asks us to divide, and we cannot use synthetic division because it's a 3 here. So we think what times 3x is 6x to the third? So 6x squared. And multiplying it by this right here gives us, I'm sorry, 2x squared. So that gives us 6x to the third, and then plus 2x squared. Draw the line and change the sign. So those cancel, and this gives me negative 6x squared. I can bring down the next term. Whole process over. What times 3x is negative 6? So negative 2x. Okay, it gives me negative 6x squared minus 2x. Once again, I can draw that line and change the signs. Those cancel, so I have 6x and then plus the 3 whole process over. What times 3x is 6x? would be 2, which gives me 6x plus 2. Draw the line, change the signs, remainder of 1. So plus 1 over our 3x plus 1 is my answer for 31. Number 36 is asking us to find use synthetic division to find p of 2. So you can, to check yourself, take 2 and just plug it in, okay? But we're going to use synthetic division, so we're going to divide a 2 out. So 1x to the 5th, 0x to the 4th, 0x to the 3rd, 4x squared, minus 2x, minus 4. Okay, so don't forget those zeros in there. So 2, add, 2 times 2 is 4, add, 8, add, 24, add, and multiply and add, okay? So I know that right there, f of two, p of 2 is equal to 40. It's equal to the remainder. Number 37 says, if 7 plus 2i is an answer, then I know what other has to be. And you know that they come in pairs. So 7 minus 2i also has to be an answer. Okay, 38 has these zeros here, and we need to 
um, turn this into a polynomial. So first I'm going to put them into factors. It's going to be x plus 1 times x minus 4 times x minus 7. And then I have to multiply these all together. It doesn't matter the order, I'm just going to take the, I'll take the second two. It would be x squared minus 7x minus 4x plus 28, which would give me x squared minus 11x plus 28. And now I have to multiply by that by the x plus 1 out front. So take the x through, it'll be x to the third minus 11x squared plus 28x. Take the 1 through, plus 1x squared minus 11x plus 28. Adding like terms, it'll be negative 10x squared, 17x plus 28. And there is the polynomial. Okay, 41 gives you these answers. Okay, these are my zeros. I have to turn them into factors first. So this would be x minus negative 2 plus the square root of 5. And this would be x minus negative 2 plus the square root of 5. And then x plus 2 and x minus 1. Okay, I'm going to take these negatives and distribute them through. So it would be x plus 2 minus the square root of 5 and x plus 2 minus the square root of 5. Since that should be a minus, that should be a plus there. Okay, and this one, uh, I can multiply that through pretty easily. It'd be x squared minus x plus 2x minus 2, which would be x squared plus x minus 1. Okay, now I'm going to multiply these three together. x times x is x squared. x times 2 is 2x plus the square root of 5x. Take the 2 through, plus 2x, plus 4, plus 2 square root of 5. Take this one through, it'll be negative square root of 5x, so those will cancel. And then it would be plus, minus 2 square root of 5, so those cancel. And then minus the square root of 25. Square root of 25 is 5, okay, so if I had like terms I have x squared plus 4x, and then this and this, this would be 4 minus 5 is negative 1. Okay, so now I have to take this times this stuff here. So it gives me x to the fourth plus x to the third minus x squared. Take the, this through. Okay, plus 4x to the third plus 4x squared minus 4x. And then negative x squared minus x plus 1. Okay, adding like terms together, we get x to the fourth plus 5x to the third plus 3x squared minus 5x plus 1. Whoop, something went wrong. We didn't get the same answer as they did. One second, let me figure it out. Okay, I kind of see my mistake here. 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. Okay, which makes this um, 2x squared right here. And 8x right there. And plus 2 right there. Okay, so we should get x to the fourth plus 5x to the third yep. plus x squared minus 9x plus 2. Okay, so that's, that's better there. Number 42 asks, is negative 1 a 0 of this? So you can do this two different ways. One, you could take negative 1 and plug it in everywhere and, and see if it equals to 0. But the way we did it in this chapter is we learned that we did it with long division. So we can take and divide this out. So 2, negative 2, negative 1, 1, negative 3, 3, and, okay, 
So we know that P of negative one would equal negative five. So if you take negative one, plug it in there, you'll get an answer of negative five, which means it is not a zero. 43 asks, is x plus one a factor of this? So you can divide it, uh, long division or synthetic division. Um, so I'm gonna divide it with synthetic, it's a little easier. Negative one. Okay, so we get a remainder of zero. So yes, um, x plus one times, and I, can, I didn't ask for this, but it'd be x squared plus one x plus two. So this is a factor, okay, since we have zero remainder there. Number 44 has a degree four, so I need four answers, one, two, three. And remember that negative one plus three i would also be a solution. Then I, eventually I wanted to go through this as well, because this is a little longer one. First I have to make your factors, so it'll be x minus 3 and x minus 1. x minus negative 1 minus 3i. And x minus negative 1 plus 3i. Okay, so this is pretty easy to multiply through. x squared minus x minus 3x plus 3 would be x squared minus 4x plus 3. This one here, a little bit more, would be x plus 1 plus 3i, and x plus 1 minus 3i. Okay, I want to multiply this through. It would be x squared plus x minus 3xi. Take the 1 through, plus x plus 1 minus 3i. Take this through, 3xi plus 3i minus 9i squared, okay? Those cancel, those cancel, we're left with x squared plus 2x's, and this would makes that a plus 9 because negative 1 times negative 9, plus the 1 there makes plus 10. Okay, now I gotta multiply these two together. So I'm gonna take the x squared through first, so x to the fourth, two x to the third plus 10 x squared, negative four x to the third, negative eight x squared minus 40 x, plus three x squared plus six x plus 30. So adding like terms, uh, be negative 2x to the third plus 2x squared. Whoops, another x squared down here. Uh, to be 5x squared. X's be right there, be uh, what? Negative 34x plus 30. Okay. Now, we know this. Has, we have to get this to be, go through a certain point, okay? So we're gonna have to figure out what we're gonna multiply that all through to get it through this point right here, okay? Mm -hmm. So our P of X is negative 36, is equal to our A, which we don't know yet. We have to figure that out, and we have to plug in the two. So two to the fourth minus two times two to the third plus five times two squared minus 34 times two plus 30. Okay, so we gotta figure up that number there. Um, grab my calculator to do that. Okay, and plugging that in, I got negative 18. So divide there, I get A is equal to two. So I have to take the two and multiply it through everything there. So my final answer is gonna be 2x to the fourth minus 4x to the third plus 10x squared minus 68x plus 60. Number 45 tells us we have this here um, and it tells us that this is one of our zeros. We want to find all the rest of them. Okay, so there's four zeros. We've got to find four solutions. So one of them is this. We know those come in pairs, so one, mi one plus i would also have to be an answer. And we gotta find the two other answers here to this, okay? 
So uh, let's take these and multiply them together and then divide it out of this, okay? So if we take these as factors, this would be x minus one minus i and x minus one plus i. So if I multiply it through, it would be x minus one plus i and x minus one minus i. Multiply it through, x squared minus x minus i minus x plus one plus i and plus xi minus i minus i squared. So we have x squared minus two x Okay, and we have the one, this is negative one and negative plus two. Okay, so now I gotta divide that out of our whole thing there. So I'm gonna use some long division. Okay, so what times x squared is x to the fourth? x squared. gives me x to the fourth minus two x to the third plus two x squared. And I'm gonna draw the line and change those signs there. So those cancel, I have x to the third, negative x to the third, and minus 10 x squared. And I can bring down the other terms there. Okay, what times x squared is x to the negative x to the third? negative x would be negative x to the third plus 2x squared minus 2x those cancel negative 12x squared plus 24x minus 24. What times x squared is negative 12x squared is negative 12, which gives you negative 12x squared plus 24x minus 24. And when I draw the line, change the signs, I have zero remainder there. Okay, so now what does this tell us? Now I have to take this and I have to solve this now. Okay. I can factor that into x minus four and x plus three, and I would get x is equal to negative four, sorry, positive four and negative three. Okay, so we have one, two, and three and four answers. So we have our, our four solutions to it. Number 47 asks us to find the rational zeros of this by first listing all the possible zeros and then finding the ones that are actually the zeros. So there's going to be, um, yeah, so we'll figure them out here. So it's the P over Q thing. Okay, our P is 8. Therefore, plus or minus 8, plus or minus 1, plus or minus 4, and plus or minus 2. And then Q is 3. So therefore, it's just plus or minus 3, and plus 3 times 1. Okay, so if we list out all the possibilities here, okay, we could have eight thirds, or negative eight thirds. We could have eight or negative eight. Okay, that takes eight thirds and one through, so one third or negative one third and one or negative one, take the four through, four thirds, negative four thirds, and four over one and negative four over one, and then take the two through, so two over one and negative two over one. Okay, so those are all the different possible zeros using the rational zeros theorem. Um, okay, so then you gotta take and find which ones they are. So if you take negative two, plug it in here for all these x's, it will equal zero. So that works. If you take one third, plug it in there, it'll equal zero. So that works. 
and also take the 4, plug it in, that will also work. So those are all your zeros for 47. That means, okay, there's five of them, right? That means three. we have three real, probably be two imaginary then. Okay, using the sign change, positive to positive to negative, 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 negative. So there's one sign change, therefore there's going to be one positive real. Okay, and then I got to find P of negative X which means take the negative x to the fourth would be still be x to the fourth, so be, that wouldn't change. Negative x to the third, though, becomes negative x to the third. Negative x squared still stays positive, so that's a negative x squared. And then negative x and negative two makes that a positive two x, and minus one. Okay, so sign changes positive to negative, negative to positive, positive to negative. So there's either three or down by two, three or one, uh, negative real zeros. Okay, so that's using the sign change. 49 wants us to prove that there is no real zero greater than two and no zero less than negative four. So I'm gonna divide out the two first. Okay, so Two times two is four. Two times seven is fourteen. Minus five would be nine. Nine eighteen would be twenty-six. Fifty-two would be forty-two. Okay. So since all non-negative, okay, it proves that there is no zero greater than two. Okay, the other one we want to prove is that it's less than negative four. So we're gonna divide that out. So hopefully we'll see positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative. It'd be negative eight, it'd be negative five, it'd be 20, it'd be negative 15, it'd be what, negative 60, uh, it'd be negative 52. Uh, 52 times four, 208, um, positive 208, minus 10 gives you 198, okay? So we looked at that, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive. So alternating signs. Okay, therefore that proves that there are no zeros less than negative four. So you know all the zeros are going to be between negative four and negative two. Number 50 asks you to use a graphing utility to graph it. So you got your graph here. You can use Desmos for that. Uh, it has three roots or three zeros. Okay, one, two, three zeros. And three is the, in the one that's an integer is what it's asking there. Number 51. Okay, so we want to know the factors, okay? So we know that three is a solution. So we're gonna divide out that three. One x to the third, negative two x squared minus four x plus three. So if we divide that out, okay? So our factors would be the x minus three from this one, and then x squared plus x minus one. 52 asks you to solve this then. So if I take this one, I'm gonna use a quadratic formula, so negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus four times a times c over two times a. Okay, so um, this would be four, be five, over two, so we get negative one plus or minus five over two, which if you work these out, they will give you these two decimals right here that we get from our graph in, in Desmos. Okay, so 53 asked us to use the calculator or the graphing to find what those decimals are, which they are right there. 
and we said those are the same as those there. 54, where is it greater than 0? So it's going to be greater than 0 right here. So between negative 1.618 and 0.618. Okay, it's also greater than 0 here. So from 3 to infinity. Okay, where is it less than or equal to? Okay, less than would be right here. So um, from negative infinity up to this point right here, negative 1.618 or equal to. Okay, and then it goes greater and then it goes less again right here. So 0.618 to 3. Okay, so 56, they give us this graph and we want to know what the factors are. So it looks like x equals 2, so our factor would be x minus 2. Looks like it's at 1, so it would be x minus 1. And then at 3, and notice when it goes up and like just touches like that, there's two of them. So it would be x minus 3 and there's two of those, okay? So it should be a total of four of them. One, two, three, four. 57, g is the red, so it's up, up. So we know that has to be an even, it has to be like x squared or x to the fourth or something like that. Number 58, f, f goes this way and that way, so that's gonna be an odd, like x to the third or x to the fifth or something, because uh, they're going opposite directions. Okay, 59 of f, since it's up, up, we know it's gonna be positive. Number 60, g, okay, our g function here is, does not hit your x-axis, so there is no, no solutions to where it's equal to zero. Okay, 61 says take the f function, and where is it less than zero? So right here would be less than zero, so from negative infinity to a. And then it's greater than zero, and then it's less than zero here again between b and c. Sixty-two. Where is it? Where is f greater than g? So here, okay. Where? What is the solution set of f f of x greater than g of x? Okay, f of x is greater than g of x right in this area right here. See how the green, the f is the blue, is greater than this one, right? Their outputs are greater. Um, everywhere else, the, the red's greater, okay? So just between d and h. Number 63, okay, it's f. Where does f of x minus g of x equal zero? Okay, another way to look at that is if I subtract this over, we could also say where does f of x, e I mean if I add g of x over, equal g of x. So where are they equal to each other? They're equal at d, and they're also equal at h. So it's not the interval between them, it's just, just the set of those two numbers, so put them in set form. Okay, um, number 62, oh, we didn't have to do 63 anyway, it's there for you. Okay, number 66. Okay, we have this function here. We have x to the seventh as our leading coefficient. Can it have eight x-intercepts? No, at most seven, since it's x to the seventh. Okay, 67, um, if you look at this one here, can it have up to six local extrema? Okay, uh, the local extrema means it's basically the turns, right? We said if, if it's x to the seventh, then there's gonna be six turns to it, right? So therefore, yes, each of those turns is a local extrema. 68. Is it gonna have a positive y-intercept? Okay, a y-intercept is when all my x's are zeros. So basically, if I put all these x's into zeros, my y-intercept is 500. Okay, so that's true. We're gonna keep going until 
70. Okay, I'll show you those answers there. So, okay, number 69. N behavior of 66, and your answer in 68, the graph must have at least one negative x intercept. Okay, so if, um, if, if it's an x to the seventh, it's odd. So now the n behavior is going to be like this. Okay. And we said the has a positive y intercept that, yep. So I know that if it's, you know, intercepts up here at 500, it's going to have to go through and come back down. So you know it's going to have to go through there. So that's also true. Okay, number 70. If a polynomial function of even degree, so x squared, x to the fourth, has a positive leading coefficient, so you, the positive coefficient means it's going to be up, up, and a negative y-intercept, so you know it's going to have to be y down here, you must have at least two real zeros. That's true, because if it's going to go up, up with a negative there, that would also be true there. Okay, number 72 says how many local maxima does it have? So local maxima would be one and two. So two local maxima. Number 73, same graph here. One local minimum point lies on the x-axis and has an integer of, it. what is its coordinate? Right here. Two zero local min. 74, the greatest x-intercept is 5, therefore x minus 5 is a factor. Use synthetic division to find the quotient polynomial obtained when you divide it by negative 5, okay? So I know, um, yeah, so I have to divide out the 5, so it'd be negative 2x to the 5th, 15x to the 4th, 21, 32, 60, and 0 x. Okay. So down to negative 2. 5 times negative 2 is negative 10. Add the other 5. 25. Add the other is 4. 20. Add the other is negative 12. And that would be 60. Negative 60, 0, 0. Okay. So our, um, our quotient would be negative 2x to the 4th plus 5x to the 3rd plus 4x squared minus 12x. Seventy-four. Whoops, this was 74 right there. 73 is right here. 74 is right there. Okay, 75. What is the range of p of x? Okay, so p, uh, the range, um, it keeps going up, 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 keeps going down, down, down. So it's all real numbers, goes from negative infinity to positive infinity. 76, the graph has a local minimum point with a negative x value. Use your calculator to find the coordinate, express that. Okay, so this point right here would be, you can use Desmos, should be somewhere about right here. Seventy-seven. I'll go that to the next page. Okay, we have three x to the third plus two x squared minus twenty-one x minus fourteen. Solve the equation. Okay, so we're going to use grouping. So analytically means kind of you know work it out by factoring. We're going to use that method. So we're going to take x squared out. So you have 3x plus 1, 2 left over. If you can take out negative 7, and you're left with 3x plus 2. So your factors are 3x plus 2, and the x squared is being distributed to those, and the negative 7. Okay, then to solve them, I can't factor either of them any farther, so I set them equal to 0. So you know x squared is equal to 7, so x equals plus or minus the square root of 7. 
and subtract your 2, 3x equals negative 2, and divide by 3. Okay, number 78, I'll put over here. I think we had to do 78. Yep, 78. Okay, so we're going to graph this by hand first. Okay, so what do we know from 78? Okay, so we know um, if I do negative x plus 2 equal to 0, I have x equals 2. That's one solution. I know that x equals 3. And I know that x equals negative 1, and that's a double 0. So there's double 0 right there. It means it comes and barely touches, okay? Now it's x to the fourth. So I know it's going to be up, 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 actually, since it's negative, it's going to be down, down, right? So it's going to come up and just like this, the y-intercept is at negative 6. So it's going to come through here somehow, come back up through here, and back down through there. So we have the down, down, okay? So 78 part A, where is it equal to 0? It's equal to 0 at negative 1, at 2, and at 3. Part B, where is it going to be greater than 0? So it's less than, still less than, greater than is right here. So between 2 and 3. Part C, where is it going to be less than 0? So less than 0 would be this section. So from negative infinity to negative 1. But then it hits 0, so that's not less than 0. So you have to be careful with that. And then it's also here, so from negative 1 to 2. And then it's positive, and then it's negative again from 3 to, ne to positive infinity. Okay, number 82 um, gives you these, and it says to represent 0 is 1990. So this would be 8 years later, so you're going to use 8 for this. Okay, you're not going to use 1998, you're going to use 8. And then from 1990 to 2000 is 10 years, 1990 to 2005 is 15, etc. Okay, so you can use these numbers when you plug in the Desmos. So you plot the data, look at that. Part B, find the quadratic model. Remember you use y1 tilde ax1 squared plus bx1 plus c. Okay, you and you're going to get an equation something like negative uh, 0.011x squared plus 0.869x plus 11.9. Okay, part C says find the cubic model. So you can use y1 tilde ax1 cubed plus bx1 squared plus cx1 plus d. And you'll get something like y is approximately negative 0.00087x to the third plus 0.0456x squared minus 0.219x plus 17.8. Okay, so you get something like this. Okay, D. Okay, you want to, you can see them both on Desmos, right? Have them both in there. You want to compare the two and which one's the better, better fit. Okay, the cubic one is a better fit. Okay, remember you looked at that r squared value, right? When you have them both plotted in Desmos here, and that r squared value is higher, it's closer to one for this, so you, cubic is a better one. Would you want to use linear? Uh, no, linear not it is not a good fit. Now you could use it, but it's not a good fit, right? It's kind of scattered. Okay, there's the homework.